So in the last video, we um, were working towards the proof of this theorem that the dot product of V and W is the length of V times the length of W times the cosine of the angle between them. And we just proved this really nice fact that if you take A, B and transpose the product A, B, uh, that's the same as doing B transpose A transpose. And remember also the, the relevance of this is that the dot product can be rewritten as V transpose W. So we're still not going to go straight to the proof of the theorem. There's a, there's more more to come. Um, so I, I'm going to have to start by telling you what an orthogonal matrix is. So um, an n by n matrix. So a square matrix A is called orthogonal if A transpose times A is the identity. Now we've seen the word orthogonal in the last video to describe two matrices that are perpendicular. This use of the word orthogonal is basically saying that this is, this is equivalent to saying, I'm not going to prove this now, but this is equivalent to saying that all columns of A are you know, considered as vectors are orthogonal to one another. And each has length one when considered as a vector. So that's the reason for the word orthogonal here. Um, so let me, let me, it's a bit of a weird definition first time you see it, um, but let me give you an example. And this is kind of going to be the key example that we use in the proof of the theorem. So cos theta minus sine theta, sine theta, cos theta, this two by two rotation matrix is orthogonal. Remember, this is the matrix that defines for us the rotation of the plane by an angle theta. Let's check. Um, cos theta minus sine theta, sine theta, cos theta. Uh, oh, that's that's A. Um, let's copy and paste that. This is going to be A transpose. Transpose means I'm switching these two entries. It's just a two by two matrix. So that's going to go up here. That's going to go down here. So this product is cos theta times cos theta plus sine theta times sine theta that's cos squared plus sine squared cos theta times minus sine theta plus sine theta times cos theta that's cos times minus sine plus sine times cos and then minus sine cos cos sine And finally, minus sine times minus sine, that's sine squared plus cos times cos, so cos squared. Okay, and now we spot some nice things. First of all, this is zero, and this is zero, because it's just the same thing subtracted off itself. Next nice thing is these entries are both one. That's because cos squared plus sine squared is, is one. Oh, that's sine squared, sorry. Cos squared plus sine squared is one. 
So this is 1, 0, 0, 1, which is the identity matrix. 2 by 2 identity matrix. Actually, I should have probably said this earlier, but if you were working with 3 by 3, 4 by 4 matrices, you know, the identity matrix is just the thing that has 1s on the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. So I have seen people in the past try and guess what the identity matrix might be and get it horribly wrong just by maybe putting ones in the two corners and nothing else but it's got ones along the diagonal and zeros everywhere else okay so the two by two one is i think the only one i've actually written down so far so here's the nice fact about orthogonal matrices this is why i've introduced them um, so if A is orthogonal, so if A transpose A is the identity, then the geometric transformation corresponding to A um, preserves dot products. So, um, proof, uh, A, V, let's take it, what, what does this mean exactly? Well, it'll, it'll hopefully come, become clear in the proof, right? So what I mean is if I take A, V and A, W and I dot them together, that should give me the same as just V dot W. So this is by definition A, V transpose times a w now using the lemma from before a v all transposed is v transpose a transpose remember if you're transposing a product you transpose the two factors and stick them in the opposite order and then times a w and now looking at this a we've got an a transpose a in the middle of this which is the identity so this is v transpose times the identity times w and identity doesn't do anything we can just ignore it it's like multiplying by one this is v transpose w and this is v dot w okay in particular orthogonal transformations or, you know, the transformations corresponding to orthogonal matrices um, don't change lengths of vectors. That's because the length of V is the square root of V1 squared plus plus v n squared by Pythagoras and that's the same as the square root of v dot v and so an orthogonal matrix preserves dot products therefore it preserves lengths of vectors think of orthogonal matrices as things that are like rotations or reflections so we've seen that the two by two rotation matrices are orthogonal and actually in higher dimensions the same is true any rotation matrix in any dimension is an orthogonal matrix reflections also turn out to be orthogonal matrices um, and combinations of reflections and rotations that's basically it Okay, so now I'm going to come back and prove this theorem that V dot W equals length of V times length of W times the cosine of the angle between them. Let's get a new page. So the proof is going to be slightly dodgy. Um, 
to give a proper proof of this you'd basically need um some techniques that i haven't developed and that you would see in uh the math 220 linear algebra course next year um and I'll, I'll point out where it's slightly dodgy as we go on but this is just to give you the idea the proof is um recall that the angle uh, between the two vectors v and w is given by taking a plane spanned by them and just taking the angle inside that plane as I described in this picture here so you take the plane spanned by V and W and you take the angle inside that plane so take the plane spanned by V and W and take theta to be the angle between them in that plane and this is where things are slightly dodgy because um, we don't yet know technically that the plane that we've picked here is geometrically the same as the standard R2 in other words, the, the fancy name for this is that they're isometric, that geometry is, is the same in those two planes. In fact, all planes are the same in Euclidean space. Uh, you can prove this using uh, Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization or something. Um, but we're just going to assume that all planes are equal. So this means, without loss of generality, um, assume we're in R2. So if you haven't seen it before, this abbreviation WLOG means without loss of generality. So further, we can rotate using our 2x2 two two rotation matrix so that V points in the positive x direction. then v, uh, w is going to point in some other, other direction. Um, and we can do this without changing the angle, because rotations preserve angles. We know that, at least intuitively. Um, and we also know that rotations preserve dot products, because rotations are orthogonal matrices and orthogonal matrices preserve dot products. So this is another without loss of generality. This doesn't change v dot w and it doesn't change the angle. So finally we can just compute v dot w. This is v1 w1 plus v2 w2. Well v doesn't have a component in the y direction so we don't need this second term let's rub it out v1 is just the length of v because v is pointing in the the one direction and w1 is the x component of w which you remember from lecture one is just length of w times cos of the angle that w makes with the horizontal and now that is the angle between V and W, so that's a proof. So if you were slightly disturbed about the fact I just said rotations preserve angles um, without any justification, uh, you should have been even more disturbed about the fact I didn't redefine what angle meant. I just appealed to your geometric intuition, so this is a, an intuitive argument. This is not a module where I'm going to be too bothered about 
uh, setting things up in a completely rigorous way. Okay, in the next video, we're going to look at some three by three rotation matrices um, and see what we can understand about them.